Saturday week it is. There's a triple header kicking off South Africa, France, followed by Fiji, England, and then it's us versus Australia, all at Eden Park. Ruhe de Mont joins us. Thank you so much for coming back onto the programme. And how are you feeling uh, a week or so, a couple of days out from the big event? Yeah, nine days out from our um, the start of the Rugby World Cup. Um, there's a really good buzz within our team at the moment. Everyone's very excited. Um, we can't wait to to start our tournament, really. A triple header. It's a heck of a way to start, too. South Africa, France, Fiji, England, and then, of course, us against Australia, all at Eden Park. Yep. I know it's going to be a special, um, a special night for us. I think last I saw there was, Nearly 20,000 tickets sold, awesome. which is crazy to think that um, 20,000 people will be there to watch women's rugby. I don't think that's um, ever been done before here in Aotearoa anyway. We've never been able to generate such a big crowd. So it's really exciting for us and like the support of our whanau and the country means so much to us. So it's, yeah, it's, it's going to be exciting. I wanted to ask you about that because after watching uh, the Adelaide test against Australia, I think it was Ruby on the sideline. I'm pretty sure it was Ruby. I hope I got that right. But she was she was asked asked about it, what it meant. And she looked around to the to the stands and she said, look, you know, 10 years ago, we didn't have this. You know, we didn't have crowds. We didn't have these kind of matches. We didn't have, you know, the kit that we've got, the support that we've got and everything else. She said, it's just, it's it's completely and utterly changed. Do you feel the same way? Absolutely. I think of... Um, the resources, the crowd, the support especially that, um, and I guess even more so the recognition that female athletes, not just female rugby players, but female athletes get now and we've come such a long way, but there's still so much further that we need to go and having tournaments like this, a Rugby World Cup here in Aotearoa, you know, where rugby is our main sport, um, kind of throws women's rugby into the limelight and I hope it forces people to, to look our way because we make a lot of noise mm-hmm. um, and we want people to notice us. We want people to recognise us because there's so many great women, not only in this team, but in many teams um, throughout the country doing their bit to inspire, uplift and grow and give a platform and a space for young girls to aspire to be like. Yeah, so yeah, there's so much has changed, but yeah. Still, still a lot to go, a long way to go. Yeah, no, when you put it like that as well, because I mean, I like to simplify and think you're just out there, you're playing a game of rugby, but it's not, it is so much more than that. Katrina Grant was on the program with us yesterday, and it was just delightful talking to her as well about, you know, becoming a full time coach for Super Rugby. I mean, that's just brilliant, isn't it? Again, it's just such a, you know, we feel like we've come a long way. We're plenty of work to go, but, you know, you've got to mark these milestones, don't you? Absolutely, and I think it's really important, you know, to be present in this moment and actually enjoy and reflect on where, you, where we were and where we are. Um, and I think, as a team, we're really good at that. Um, marking moments, I think, on Saturday, you know, um, the double header with, with the ABs, um, the importance of having our home crowd there, our whānau there, our last game before we get into our World Cup. It was such an awesome night, and I think that, as a team, the playing 23, we definitely felt that energy and that vibe from the crowd, from our families, um, and those who couldn't be there sending messages of support honestly goes such a long way and I think it even boosts um, the way that we perform and the way that we play out there on the field. Ruhe Damont is with us, co-captain of the Black Ferns, and we're a week and a little bit away from the start of the World Cup. Yeah, look, I worry about things. I'm a worry wart, and I worried about that game because I looked at the scoreline, I watched it, and I just went, mm, is that the kind of hit out that we need? You know, when you're beating a team as, as easily as that. I know it's probably a stupid thing to worry about because, I mean, you put it to one side, and, I mean, you think about it in different ways. But just playing in front of the crowds, though, like in Adelaide, and that, running out into a big stadium with a huge crowd, like that, how can it not uplift you? Yeah, um... It's a pretty surreal feeling, you know, To and, and we're so privileged to be able to work so hard that that gets recognised and we get selected to play in games like Saturday. Um, we, all, we have the opportunity to run out in these massive stadiums that you only watch on TV and everyone's there and cheering for you, cheering for your team, cheering for your country. Um, I think with relation to the game on Saturday, um, we knew that Japan had actually come off two really good wins, one against Australia um, and one against Ireland. So, yeah, good results, um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And so I guess despite the scoreline, we know that, they're, that they were capable of so much more um, and they were a team that we weren't taking lightly. Um, I guess also on the flip side, we had really simplified our game plan right down 
from Adelaide and um, I think that simplicity worked really well because one thing that we've kind of struggled to execute this year is a consistent performance and I think Saturday's game was way more consistent than other games that we've played this year. So I think it was a combination of factors. Okay. I mean, it doesn't matter a jot what I think. It's more important what, what your coach thinks. What did, what did, what did um, Smithy say afterwards? Yeah, Smithy was happy with the way that um, we kind of executed the game plan. Like I talked about the simplicity of it. We only had two key focuses on attack, and he thought that as a team we consistently demonstrated that in facets throughout the game. Um, but there's still aspects of it that he thinks that we can be better at and so we've been working on that we're quite lucky we didn't have a game this weekend but we're still assembled obviously for World Cup so we've got a couple of weeks to um, sharpen the tools before we mm. take on Australia we know where they've exploited us um, this year so far uh, and so we're going to be looking at how we can resolve that How ready are you? There's a team Um that's a really good question. I think that's hard for me to answer because I've never been to a World Cup. Okay. But I know that physically um, I've never seen the girls in the form that we're in at the moment. I know that in terms of our skill set, um, the skills that we've been working on all year, uh, they are the sharpest now than they've ever been throughout the year. Um, we've gotten to a point where we can self-analyse and help each other, which shows that the teachings that are, you know, being given by our coaches are sticking and we can help each other, which is great because the easiest way to teach or to learn is to teach. Um, I think that we're more ready now than we have been ever before. That is so cool to hear because with the disruptions and everything, we don't need to go back into that, but at the start of the year and that the thing that I suppose as a fan, I'm just looking at, I just want you all to be able to have just the ultimate clarity, belief in yourselves, know where you're at, and to forget all the peripheral stuff. It's not about anyone else from here on in. It's about you as a group of players, and it's about you achieving what it is you want to achieve. The rest of it takes care of itself, doesn't it? And all the outside stuff, as much as you want to do it for, for all of us fans, and you want to do it for Fano and you want to do it for the country and stuff like that, I, I, I believe in all these circumstances, it's about you as players. That's the only thing that counts from here. Yeah, that's really cool that you say that we talk about, like, um, I guess our vision as a team, what we want to achieve, and a big part of that is actually inspiring each other, and I feel very fortunate to be surrounded by 31 other amazing wahine toa who inspire me to trust them so that I can have their back out there on the field. Um, they inspire me to always make the right decisions because at the end of the day, um, you know, the team is the most important thing here and I'm totally. just a small part of that. Totally. Um, I'm so, I was so happy when I saw the World Cup squad selected because not only are the players here great players, but they're also great people and it makes every day we're together for the next two months so much easier because the character of the players, um, they're outstanding and they're top-notch girls. So, yeah, I think... I think it's it's going to be fun. Ruhei, I always say as well that, you know, you got to, and I suppose you get told a lot this as well, free your minds in terms of there is no fear. To be able to reach for the stars and touch those stars, you've got to stand on a ladder. And if, and, if, and if paying the price is falling off that ladder, I think it is a check that is well worth cashing because the chance to be a world champion, if you asked me and said to me, um, sorry, this might be a bit boring for you, but if you asked me and said, hey, if you've got a chance to be the best radio announcer in the world, I would take that. I would take that chance. I'd leap at that chance. I'd want to own that chance. And if the only thing that can happen at the end of it is that, hey, I'm not, well, <laughs> give me the chance to do it again. That's how I always feel. And I think in a performance business, I hope you feel like that's the same, that from here on in, you've got a chance. How many people ever in their lives get a chance to be a world champion at anything? And that's, and that's what you're staring at. Absolutely. Oh, we spoke about um, this year doing things like never before. And we, you know, things have happened this year um, in our team, in, in women's rugby in general, that have never happened before. Um, we have the unique opportunity to play a Rugby World Cup here at home. No other um, female rugby player can say that, that they've played a Rugby World Cup for the Black Ferns here in Aotearoa. And so we get that opportunity and we know that um, that's going to bring pressures that we've never experienced before. Um, but like I say, the characteristics of this team, the character of the players, 
um, the way that we trust each other, the bonds that we're forming, it's only enhancing us off the field and making us better on the field. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, how do I say this? Yeah, I know that there's something special within this team. There's a special feeling. Um, and I hope that at the end of the tournament, until we come, we can lift that cup. Because I can't, yeah. Feel, I get it. Feels good. I get good it. Feeling. Yeah. I tell you what, you've got so much aloha from all the country and uh, so much support and everyone just wishes you really well. Just go out there, just play well. Just play with freedom and belief and love with you and just play well. That's all we want, you know, just to be proud of you, which we already are. Thank you so much. Honestly, it means so much to our team. Cool, eh? It's only a week and a half away. Woo! <laughs> Brilliant, isn't it? Nine days. Eight days, nine days. That's it. All right. Thank you so much for your time. I really do uh, appreciate it. I know you get so many interviews to do and everything. It means a lot to us as well that you speak with us. So thank you so much. No, thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure.